Twitter is such a massive source of distraction. Whenever it's open, it recommends hashtags on the side and occasionally one catches mine and click on it and this is keep the lockdown. And I've just been reading what people are saying about the lockdown restrictions being lifted uh, in the coming Monday, so after the weekend over here in the UK. As a UK resident, I am rather invested in what people are uh, thinking and saying about this. And so reading a couple of tweets here, the British tabloids have massively misjudged the public mood. We are hurt, we are grieving, we are struggling, we are angry, we are tired and sick of being told everything is alright by a useless government and a few tax avoiding billionaire media moguls. Now I think when we talk about the we, as in like populations of people, we've got to realise that not everyone actually feels the same way. I'm personally on the side of keeping the lockdown. Um, based on what other countries have done, where the numbers are, it looks like we have not yet effectively um, got the numbers low enough to start to ease the lockdown restrictions. And just flicking through here, there are some people with disagreeing opinions using this keep the lockdown hashtag. So dangerous headlines and a dangerous policy. We are, are we really past the peak? Do we have control over the crisis in care homes? Do we have a robust test and trace and isolate? Is our NHS supported to be at capacity with adequate PPE? Are all key workers safe? No. So we must keep the lockdown. I agree with a lot of what's being said here. There are uh, various factors that seem to be really key to getting through this, like the protective equipment for frontline workers, the test and trace and isolate, which um, we're not doing, but the, the tests over here I think I'm thinking of track and trace. The testing we're doing over here, we're falling behind our standards by quite a lot. Or should I say the goals that we have set ourselves. Now, if we look at the paper headlines here, you know, happy Monday, you can go outside and do all of this and do all of that, like the tone of it. Uh, lockdown joy next week. Also, hurrah, lockdown freedom beckons. This is very like, yay, we're over it, we're on to the next step. And they're obviously free to write about this however they would like. I personally don't think this is the appropriate way to communicate the information. In fact, most of the information I've been getting about coronavirus has come from the educational community on YouTube and the tone is so different from what you see in mainstream media. I've been watching highlights from the BBC, Sky News, and they all seem to focus around statistics and numbers and like hammering key points at the audience, whereas in the educational community you get this in-depth amount of information about how to interpret what the numbers mean, the sciences, the relationships between all these different factors and also what different people are uh, thinking about it. And I feel like that's so much more informal and helpful and if more people would get the information on a more detailed level like that where they really actually understand more about the statistics and the science behind this stuff, what the coronavirus is, how it spreads, all the, you know, the R numbers, stuff like that, then maybe this kind of like, eh, it's over now sort of tone wouldn't be so uh, prominent. And with the weather turning really nice here in the UK at the moment, when I go out for my walk, when I, when I was doing that in the beginning of the lockdown, the weather wasn't so nice, wouldn't really bump into anyone. We've been in lockdown for a while. The weather's nice. People want to go outside. Of course, people want to socialize and interact. And I actually walk past quite a lot of people. And a lot of people don't seem to move out of the way or respect the two meter distance thing. I'm not someone to kick up a fuss about it. Like I, I do my own thing to keep away from others when I go out for my walk. But it's very noticeable. You'll see groups of people that are obviously friends and not from the same household. And I'm not going to call anyone out on what they're doing. But I get this feeling like people um, don't quite understand that it's not just about you as an individual, it's about what we're doing collectively. There was a tweet somewhere down here, here it is. So people who want to keep the lockdown should do so themselves. They can lock themselves in with their big playpen, with their rattles and wait until the government removes all risk from their lives. Enjoy yourselves, but leave me out of it. You see, the thing here is, is um, you know, suggesting, well, you can do the lockdown and I'll go about my own way. The lockdown works when everyone participates in it. So when we start to ease the restrictions of the lockdown, if people overextend those um, restrictions, which seems to be very likely a thing that could happen based on my own little observations and things I've seen in the news, we're probably not going to effectively step out of the lockdown in a safe way, which is why people are saying keep the lockdown. There are, of course, arguments about um, economics as well, like people need to work and earn money and that there can be death from poverty. That's just a deeper rabbit hole to go down at this point in time. 
Um, scrolling back up though, there was there was this right here. So I don't know much about New Zealand, but apparently, is it New Zealand or Australia have dealt with this incredibly effectively? They've pretty much uh, eliminated it to some extent. I should probably know a bit more about that, about talking about it. But I thought this was interesting. There were some countries who initially talked about herd immunity as a strategy. In New Zealand, we never, ever considered that as a possibility ever. Herd immunity would have meant tens of thousands of New Zealanders dying, and I simply would not tolerate that, and I don't think any New Zealander would. So on the topic of herd immunity, again, the YouTube educational community has sort of like, uh, you know, put this information out there and I feel like I understand herd immunity to some extent that if you could separate, you know, all the young and healthy people in society and then all of the vulnerable people entirely and let the virus move through the healthy people and then it disappears and then you reintegrate everyone, it would probably work. But you can't separate people in that way. It is going to reach the vulnerable people. And here you can see Boris Johnson said, perhaps you could take it on the chin take it all in one go and allow the disease as it were to move through the population without any taking any many draconian measures um, and based on what the how our response has been kind of delayed compared to other countries and the things that the government have said leading up to this um, it does feel like we've not really had a strong strategy and we are not dealing with this situation particularly great. And one of the things that I said is important on one of my live streams is that we should get behind the leadership, whatever it is. I think there's a time and a place for criticizing the leadership. It might actually be now as uh, as we shift into this lockdown restriction, perhaps a uh, lifting of the lockdown restriction, perhaps a little too early. Um, and yeah, it's starting to look like our strategy is not playing out well and perhaps we need to be doing things differently. There is shortages of PPE protective equipment and there is also tests. We're supposed to reach a certain amount of tests every single day and we're falling very far behind what we need to reach and we're choosing to lift this lockdown restriction as we're failing to meet um, those testings. So now a lot of what Boris says when I've seen him talk in a video, uh, if he's in Parliament or somewhere else, it's a lot of... Uh, similar to how Trump talks, a lot of constant positive about the situation and not so much like direct talk about what's really going on. Like I think it would be, in my opinion, a leader should be able to say, we've tried this approach and it hasn't worked out that well and now we need to change it. I think that's a strong thing that a leader can do, admit when something has gone wrong. And it, it feels like maybe the conversation now isn't quite as honest as it felt like it was in the beginning when it was about saving lives and going into lockdown. Now it feels like it's more about painting a good picture of everything that's happened. So anyway, I had a little read of this keep the lockdown hashtag and every now and then when I get distracted, I feel like, oh man, I've got so much to say about this topic that I'd like to share with people. And uh, perhaps I should do this from time to time. So I hit the record button. We've been waffling on for eight minutes. And you should let me know with a comment down below if you like this kind of format. Remember, everything here is just a discussion. Um, I'm not trying to entrench a particular opinion upon you. I'm just showing you what people are talking about, giving you my thoughts. This one right here as well. Um, it's not hard to understand people calling for the calling for us to hashtag keep the lockdown. No vaccine, no mass testing, inadequate PPP. E, no track and trace capacity and deaths continue at an alarming level, to quote Boris Johnson. I think we just had a peak in the last couple of days. I've been trying not to look at the numbers too much, but I did watch a video and I thought, hang on a minute, wasn't it like lower down a couple of days ago? And oh, yeah, it doesn't feel like it's the right time to lift the restriction. That's just my opinion. And uh, yeah, that's the end of the video. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.